in this house. No man, no, no. Before we sing a song, I believe he's about to take us higher. So I ask you now to reach to the depths of your belly and release a sound of worship. So I no, no more than a mercy. Oh, bless your name, God. There's a wave of glory moving back and forth in this house. And if you haven't jumped into the wave as yet, I'm going to invite you right now to open up your mouth and just give our God an awesome praise in this place. If you haven't jumped in as yet, open up your mouth and give him the adoration. Give him the glory, the praise that is due unto him. Let your heart pour out his praises. Let it flow from the depths of your heart to his very throne. He is already in the midst of his people. He is already in the house. He is already in this place. And so we magnify him and we glorify him. If you haven't opened up your mouth, I challenge you right now just to bless him. Just to thank him. Just to give him adoration. Just to give him the glory. Just to give him the honor. Just to give him the praise. Thank you, God. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome are you, Father. And we love on you and we bless you, Jesus. Oh, God, you are matchless, Father. You are matchless indeed, God. And so we bless you for your greatness, God. For your greatness, God, we bless you. Yes, God, we adore you, we magnify you. Yes, God, we adore you, we magnify you. I want to sing of your love. want to sing of your mercy. want to tell the whole world of the greatness of you. So I'll sing of your love And I'll sing of your mercy yeah. And I'll tell the whole world Of the greatness of you Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 Come on, sing it with me. Wanna sing? Want to sing of your love? Oh, yeah. yeah. Want to sing of your mercy? Want to tell the whole world? Tell the whole world. Oh, God, of your goodness and your greatness. Of the greatness of you. So, with all the lies within me, I will sing. So I'll sing. 
Jesus, we lift up your name. Can we sing it together one more time? Say it. Jesus, we lift up your name. Yes. Yeah. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus. Jesus, we lift up your name. Oh, one more time, exalt him in the place. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, Jesus, we lift up your name. I need somebody who knows that power in the name of Jesus. Who knows that there's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Who knows that something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. To lift up the name of Jesus in this house. Mighty are you, Lord. Mighty are you, God. Mighty are you, Savior. Mighty are you, Master. You are a God that stands alone. You are the God that stands alone. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus, we lift you up. Jesus, we lift you up. We see the things around us. We see the crowd around us. But we lift you up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout to God with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of victory. Let him know that he's worthy. Yes, God, we lift you up. Our mighty Savior, our deliverer. The one who keeps us, the one who snatches us from the snares of the enemy, the one who walks beside us every day. He's our deliverer. He's our healer. And we celebrate him today unashamedly. We bless him. Put your hands together right here. Jesus is my Jesus is my Jesus is my
know that I am, I'm saved. And I know that I am.
send your power down. Send your power right now. Hallelujah. Power of the Lord fall in this place, God. We bless you. Glory of the Lord rest mightily in this house, God. We need you. We want you. We need you. Our deliverer and our savior, we need you to release every, everything that you have for us in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bless you, Jesus. Can we just cry out for the power, for the glory? Can we cry out for the power? Cry out for the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's power that awaits us when we call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, our deliverer, Jesus, our savior, we love to call on you. We love running to you. You are our rock. You are our hope and stay. Thank you, God. Something happens when we call on your name. Things change when we call on the name of Jesus. I'm free when I call on the name of Jesus. If you love calling on his name, just lift your hand up and give him a praise of a wave, a wave of glory. Yeah. Yes, God.
what an awesome name it is. What a powerful name it is. What an awesome name it is. Oh, that we would catch the spirit and the power of the name of Jesus again in our mouths. Can we call on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus again? Call on Jesus, yeah. What a name, what a name, what a name, what a name. For who is like you, Lord, and all the earth? Match this love and beauty and bless world. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that wove again. Oh, and nothing in this world could satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup. Sing it one more time. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Sing your presence. Your presence is heaven. Is heaven. That's why I call on the name of Jesus. That's why I call on the name of Jesus. I want his presence. I want him. Your presence. Your presence. His hand unto me. His hand unto me. Sing it together. Who is like you, Lord, and all the earth? Say. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Say it one more time. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, my God. 
we cry out to Jesus and we sing, Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven. Jesus, your presence is heaven. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Yes. 
Take about 60 seconds or so and just release the sound of your worship now. Come on, release the sound of your worship. Fill this room with the sound of your worship. I need some more, Vera. Come on, fill this room with the sound of your worship. Glory, 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 glory. We're desperate and long for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate and long for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate and long for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate.
said by doing this, grab one person by both their hands. If you have to do a group of three, no more than three. I prefer a group of twos, just two. Grab a person. God told me last night in prayer, he said, when we do this, he's going to release that anointing of healing and deliverance through hands in this room. Now, he didn't say it's going to happen in the moment. He says, I'm releasing an anointing so that when you leave here, you're going to leave with that anointing. So as you press into the hands, I feel that Holy Ghost, glory to God. As you press into their hands now, something is being released into you. And you're about to minister healing and deliverance to the person whose hand you're holding. Sickness in their body is going to move because you're holding their hands. Struggles in their minds are going to be lifted because you're holding their hands. Squeeze that hand a little bit. Squeeze and let them feel you. Glory to God. Take this moment so serious because there's an impartation that's going to be released to you for them, but it's going to stay with you. Glory to God. Now for the next, next 60 seconds or so, I want you to pray for them with authority. I don't want you to pray, God, if it's your will, touch them. God, I know you can do it, so please, God, no. I want you to command the blessing of God, command the favor of God, command the healing of God to hit their life, command the power of God. So take on your authority now as you go ahead now, and I want you to intercede for that person. Go ahead now. Pray, everybody. Pray for that hand who's holding your hold. Pray for that person. Command the healing virtue of God. Command the power of God. Come on.
Release that power on their life. Release the anointing of God. Release the favor of God. of surrender. Come on. Oh, no, it's a cry oh, of victory, actually. Yes, sir. Oh, Say, oh, 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 oh. Now, I, I shared something on, I shared something on, um, on watch night. I really ain't, ain't too liking this mic. Uh, I shared something on watch night. The Lord told us to declare over the house, um, supernatural debt cancellation and debt reduction. That's what we declared on watch night. Let me give an account of that declaration from watch night to now. What the date is? December, what is January, what, 13, 12? Whatever this is. Something. From, from watch night to now, the amount of debt cancellation that is being reported back to me now is at $97,000. From watch night to now, we have record of $97,000 that has been canceled from... <laughs> Got a call on Tuesday. I shared it with the church on Tuesday. Got a call from a particular member that... And I'm not saying who these people are. They're going to have to tell you. I ain't telling them. I ain't telling you. This person called and says, Pastor, I've been trying to get approved for a mortgage to get a home. But the last time I went to the bank, they told me I have too, much, too many other debts. And the biggest of which being a car payment that I have, some car loan that I got. And the amount of the loan was 26000 something, 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 27000 Said they went to the bank to check on that loan because they really believe in God for this house. Went, went to try to talk to negotiate person at the bank said to him, oh, you don't know, someone came and paid it off. Someone came and paid the $27,000 off. I'm on Something just rushed in the room. Something just rushed in the room. The man of Osa. Shoko, I sit up a man near the home. Oh, I have a Oh, I was waiting on that. Glory to God. Dorobo Shabandi Essie. I 
Daddy, God told me to lay my hands on you, lay my hands on your head. Fire the Holy Ghost. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Devotion, nothing missing, nothing lacking. She can't need a bakutaba. She taman need a biosie. Oh, long life, he will satisfy you. He will satisfy you. With abundant life, he will satisfy you. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Glory to God. Release a shout in this room. Glory to God. There's a wind. There's a wind. There's a wind blowing. 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 There is a wind. And they are on the ocean of There's a wind blowing. There is a wind. <laughs> there is a wind. There's a wind. speak to us Tuesday night he said this clear he says that the cost of living for us is going to go down but the quality of living is about to go up you don't need to understand it just receive it it's here for you to understand just receive it Because as they move, there's going to be the wind of God that's going to blow as the dancers move through the room. I'm telling you, those that know me know this is not my flow. This is not Denzel personally. But God said that I announced it about three months ago. It's not happened. And I want you all to hear this. God says this, the dancers that are in hiding in this room. God says, we need you now. We need you. You need it in this house. As the Spirit of God hovered, as it hovered over the darkness, and, and, and out of that, the light began to shine as God opened his mouth. As we open our mouth and declare certain things, you're hovering. The hovering is not just standing there, but it's a movement that takes place. As the movement takes place with those anointed dancers, we're going to see the creation of light all over this house. And so I speak to you wherever you are in this congregation. You are needed to come forth. We need the dancers to come forth because as they dance, glory to God, breakthrough is going to take place. The light of God is going to break through. The fire of God is going to be released. Glory to God. Even as I'm saying this sound, there is a wind. I see the dancers. I see them. There is a wind. I see them. There is a wind. There's a wind blowing. 
worship but something about it feels good to them so I thank you for awakening in them that yearning for you there's a wind blowing and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all in one place on one accord there came a sound from heaven like that of a mighty rushing Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones. God said to him, can these bones live? He says, God, I ain't know, but you know. God said to him, son, don't talk to the bones because the bones ain't going to listen. I need you to elevate your language now and speak to the wind and command the wind to blow and as Ezekiel opened his mouth to prophesy to the wind the wind was just waiting for his instruction and as he opened his mouth the wind began to blow foot and ankle bones started joining together and knee bones and thigh bones and rib cages started coming together when the wind blows those things that were separated those things that were broken will come together when the wind blows every dead thing will come to life when the wind blows there's a wind blowing come on shout it out shout it out there's a wind come on say it there is a wind there's a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there is a wind. There is a wind. There is a wind. There's a wind blowing. 
listen, for those of you, those of you that are visiting with us, those of you that are inviting people to visit with us, tell them we're seeking God this month. Let them know our plates are turned down and so our only pleasure comes from his presence. The only pleasure we got is him right now. So we ain't got time to play with worship. In this, not, not, not for this season that we're in now. So I make no apologies for it. We're going after him. We're going after him. We are basking in his presence. Because he promises a wind is about to blow. He promises a wind is about to blow. We're ready for it. All right, this is the last time that we're going to declare this word. Come on, sing. There is a wind. Everybody sing. There is a wind. There is a wind. There's a wind, there's a wind blowing. Clap your hands, everybody, give God glory. No, clap your hands, everybody, give God glory. And I gotta get this out. Uh, yeah. Get your Bibles, remain on your feet, and we'll release you to sit in a second. Wind blowing, wind flowing, wind moving, yeah. There is a wind. There's a wind blowing. There is a wind blowing. Mighty rushing wind. I feel the wind, I feel the wind. Yes, I do, I feel the wind. Feel the wind blowing. Feel the wind blowing. All you gotta do is stare it next to me. You'll feel it in a second. You'll feel it. Yeah. I feel the wind. It's right next to me. I feel the wind. It's about to come where you are. Feel the wind. Touch that neighbor. Tell him, step in the wind. Tell him, step in the wind. Oh, step in the wind. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. <laughs> There's a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing. They want to stay comfortable. They got to get root up. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. Oh. Step in the wind. Now, when you step in it, you're going to lose control, though. Step in the wind. When you step in it, it may push you down, but you got to step in it. Glory. There's a wind. <laughs> Step in the wind, 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 yeah, step in the wind, there's a wind blowing, there's a wind blowing, come on, let's get it together, step in the wind, step in the wind, step in the wind, step in the wind. Let's go, come on, let's go. Step in the wind. There's a wind blowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, give us some light, Felix. Hallelujah. Step in it, step in it, step in it. There's a wind blowing. This kind of wind blows in certain locations. It's amazing that the mighty rushing wind came into the upper room, but it didn't go outside. So those that were outside were confused as to what was happening on the inside because they didn't step in. Glory to God. I don't want you to be right up in this house and the wind blow and you miss it. My God. You're too close to miss this wind. You're right here. So step in it. Step in it. Okay, for real, just the last time. Step in the wind. Just help your neighbor. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. There's a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing. 
it's one of them songs you can't write no more verses because you'll, you'll mess it up because it's a sound from heaven. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. There's a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing. Here's what you need to hear. The truth of the matter is the wind don't blow all the time. I'm telling you this, it, this kind of wind doesn't blow all the time. That's why when it does blow, you've got to step in it. This type of wind is not, it's not perennial. So whenever it does blow, you got to step up in it. Receive what God has for you. Step in the wind. Step in the wind. There is a wind blowing. There's a wind blowing. All right, come on. Proverbs 18, 20, 21 is where we want to be. Uh, you're going to need your Bible. You're going to need some the right width or a cell phone or an iPad or something. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this even before I, I get into the word. This is what the Lord, I was done preparing, prayed and everything like that. And went, went to bed and the Spirit of God woke me up. And uh, he, he said to me, he said that there are many houses of worship that have made the decision to go super or to go natural. Some houses that they're all spiritual, all, all tongues, all prophesying, all rolling on the ground and foaming at the mouth and, and just super. And then there are other houses that are almost anti-supernatural because everything they teach is the natural. They flow from a natural place. Everything is programmed and structured by what their natural desires is for it to come out to be. God says, son, I've called this house to be the culmination of both the super and the natural. And so it is important for us in this house to worship as intensely as we do. But when it's time for the word for us to receive and to listen attentively to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us because the release of the super is contingent upon our faithfulness in the natural. Now I've been saying that a lot, but I've been, I've, I was, I was, I, I was waking up, waking up, woken, awaken. I got up this morning, <laughs> right there, and, and and he says, I need you to emphasize this as we start this year off, even as we are fasting, doing something that is spiritual in nature. He says there are some natural things that we have to pay attention to. So for the superfluous, for the sensational, for the seemingly deep person, this may seem like a very trivial word, a very like, why are you teaching that kind of word this morning when I'm ready to go into the deep? Problem is with you is that you think you're in the deep, but you're really in a bowl. I'm trying to set you free. Get out that bowl you in and experience the ocean. So get ready to receive what God is about to say to us today. And step in the wind. <laughs> mm, step in the wind. There's a wind blowing. Oh, my, my, my. Proverbs 18, come on, let's go. Proverbs 18, dance and get it together. Come on. All right, all right. This is going to be a great year for us, man. It's going to be a great year. Um, I know I gave the, uh, I gave the, intercessors some focused areas for us to be praying during this fast um, but I want to do a shift um, for tomorrow and Tuesday the Lord said it to me just now tomorrow I want us to focus on life andrus this will be the focus of our prayer tomorrow life andrus and Tuesday the focus will be um, on life exhum the Lord says we want, we, we want to put some focus prayer time into that as God will give us instruction let me say this to those of you 
that are getting the voice notes and getting the prayer requests and you're saying, okay, all right, you gave me this prayer request for the day. How does this work? How do I pray this? I mean, that's only one prayer. You said pray for the spirit of evangelism. So I get down and I pray, God, I pray for the spirit of evangelism to be released in this house. Amen. How do I pray that all day? Understand this, that prayer is what authorizes God to move on our behalf. Prayer is the vehicle that God has given us not just to communicate with him. That's what we have it wrong. Prayer is how he communicates with us. Let me say it again. Prayer, as we were taught growing up, prayer, as children, we were told that prayer is how we communicate with God. That is uh, not even half full. That's just a drop in the, in the container. True prayer is how God communicates with you. So when you go before God that we are praying today in our fast for uh, the spirit of evangelism to hit the house, you go before God as an empty pitcher before a flowing fountain. And you say concerning the spirit of evangelism. And then you wait. And as you wait, the Lord will direct you as to where to go. Your Bible says he does nothing except he reveals him to his servants, the prophet. We also know that he's given man dominion in the earth. There are things that God intends to manifest in the earth, but he needs to be summoned because he's set a system in place that we have dominion. Are y'all following me? Because of that system, we must invoke him to move. So what he does is by his spirit, he then births something in your spirit, pushing you to say it, and once you say it, you empower him to move. If you don't, if a human being doesn't speak it, then there can be no manifestation of it. Let me say it again. If a human being doesn't say it, there can be no manifestation. Everything that is manifested in the earth has come by way of a word being spoken. When your, when your Bible says that he rested on the seventh day, he rested, that means that he no longer worked based on what he said. From that point on, man was created, and so everything else that was created was based on what man said. That's why your Bible says that Adam named the animals, and God says, okay. Because he could no longer, he no longer spoke. The last thing he spoke in the existence was the sixth day. And after the sixth day, he stopped speaking things in existence. Because why? Because man was there. And he gave man dominion. For, so from the seventh day on, and we are still in that seventh day, from that day on, everything that manifests, manifests as a result of what comes out of our mouth. Are you hearing the Spirit of God? So whatever it is to manifest, the only thing he can do is he can download it through the comforter who never leaves us, he's always with us, that's why he sent him here. And so he download, downloads it through the comforter with hopes that you are spiritual enough to catch what the comforter is saying and then release it out of your mouth. And once you release it out of your mouth, then now heaven can mobilize and cause it to manifest. That's what prayer is. Prayer is you connecting with the comforter to hear the heart of the Father, to release what the Father's heart is into the atmosphere, giving the Father permission to do what he intends to do. So you're saying, God is all powerful. Why he hasn't done it? Because he can't anymore because he gave us dominion. He has all power, but he honors his word above his name. And so with our dominion, we give him permission to move. Are you hearing this? So as you pray and you get a prayer topic, I had to do this today, as you get a prayer topic, you wait on God. You go in your posture of prayer, you worship. Speak to him, and then you wait. He will direct you. P prayer is really walking with God. It's really just releasing yourself to walk with God. And as you're walking with God, casually he speaks to you tells you where to go tells you what to touch touch this speak on that pray on this pray for the sound 
pray for the ushers. Believe God for the children's ministry. He, he will direct you where to go. If you receive that, shall I receive? All right. If you don't receive it now. Huh? Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, He gave His life as a ransom on the cross. Faithful application. And his demonic host. Verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. One more time, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. All right. So if your belly is empty, it's because that's what came out of your mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. <laughs> Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Before you take your seats, go to five people you didn't dra drive here with. And please tell them welcome to the life experience. And hurry back to your seat. Come on, move quickly. constrained by this great gospel forever ever to work to worship thee oh, so y'all leaving today? Y'all going? All right. Okay. All right. You, you want to stay? You want to stay? Yeah, I know. All right. I am constrained by this great gospel forever. Let's dance again out. To work. Now, if you get a turn tight envelope. Oh, okay. That's it. Everybody tied to this one. You gotta get, they got to die. Yeah, I got you. I, but you, I, just, I only ask that. I know I can hear that. I get you. All right, listen, we welcome all of you here to the life experience today. We're so glad to have you with us. And we want to just, uh, and for those of you that have to leave to go over to eat, um, I want to let you know that we're back here tonight at 7 o'clock. Our revival begins. Um, I'm excited about this. I believe it's going to be a mighty move. I spoke, I spoke to the preacher. <laughs> uh, for tonight, you know, he said, uh, he said, now, Bishop, now, I get a little old now. I don't preach long no more, you know. He said, but I still got fired. I said, no, you got fired. So I, I know it's going to be spoken tonight. Um, Evangelist Benjamin Pratt is preaching tonight. Uh, I can't wait. I've been wanting him to come in life for so long. Uh, so I finally got up here through this revival. It's going to be a powerful move tonight. So I want to see you here tonight. Uh, ben Pratt is here tonight. Um, who's tomorrow? Gregory Ministers of tomorrow night. Tuesday is Bishop Yasmin Newbold. <laughs> the, bishop, the bishop, she gonna be preaching on Tuesday. 
Wednesday is, is Bishop Carlton Taylor from Grand Bahama. And then on, uh, <laughs> you said you could pick a fast on Tuesday. Uh, um, Robert said she's calling a fast on Tuesday for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on Thursday, Prophet Pastor Kellen will be with us. So it's going to be a powerful week. Um, I'm supposedly presiding every night, but if, if, if you all carrying like how you all carrying this morning, I ain't going to make it to Thursday. So you all please behave so I can have a voice to pull through the whole week. But I'm excited about it. look forward to seeing you out this week. Let me say how proud I am as a pastor that I heard about the crowd that was here on Friday night to start the fast. Oh, man. I, when I got the, I asked how many people, I was, I, I ain't going to lie, because, you know, sometimes you, all, you can't judge based on y'all. Y'all a little funny sometimes, you know? So I was like, Lord, don't let my wife go there by herself. Lord, let somebody go there with her. I said, I hope I got one strong 15. And when <laughs> A strong, Robinson, you think about that. I was saying a strong 15. When I got the count from Friday, I couldn't believe it. And Naya counted. Naya said she counted. I said, Naya would have counted. Naya said, she, she gave me two numbers. I said, Naya, can't be all two of them. They do far apart. Like she, like she gave me two different numbers. And I was like, Naya, that's a lot of space between the two. She said, yeah, that's what it was. I said, I said how you want a low one? She said, all two. I said, okay. Got it. Um, so that was the count. But it was an amazing turnout on Friday. And I thank God for you. Um, I can't go too much into detail about what happened, but my body came under attack Thursday night. It was crazy. Before Thursday night, I, I went to bed earlier than I typically do. I went to bed about 10.30, and I woke up at midnight, writhing in pain at midnight to start up the fast. Midnight, woke up, I mean, in pain. You, I'm a man, just like all the men in here, and one thing every woman who has a man know about men is we don't go to hospital. We don't believe in that. I was on my way to the ER. Dads don't do hospital. I don't like hospital. I don't like people touching me. I was on my way to the ER. That's how excruciating the pain was. And Robin was all panicked and she was like, oh my God, what's going on? And she prayed. I said, pray, girl. Pray. Pray. <laughs> so that, it just came out of nowhere. I had no clue what it was. Lord, you know what I do in the morning? I call Kendra. I say, Kendra, I need you to. And so anyway, um, so that's what happened to me on, on Thursday and Friday. But thanks be to God, I ain't been to the hospital. Yeah. All I said, that must be something when you turn 40. <laughs> I, and, and now approaching 41, I say, so I, I scared a 50 and 60, boy. That's the way for <laughs> That's the way 40 is carry on. Lord Jesus, 50 and 60. Woo! Yeah, Warren? Oh, God, Warren. That ain't encouraging at all. <laughs> that ain't encouraging at all, boy. I was like, man. But I know y'all, I felt y'all praying. I felt y'all praying for me on Friday. And I got up on Saturday feeling brand new. And I thank God for it. And man, I ready to date a I ready to run through troops and leap over walls. Yes, I feel good, my God. Hallelujah. So anyway, uh, what time is it? 11.23. Let's go. Let's go into this today because y'all got to come back here tonight. I need to see y'all tonight. Now, look, again, let me say this for those of you who are fasting for the first time or uh, fasting with us. We teach in this church that whenever you are fasting, it's very important for you to find yourself in as many sessions of corporate worship as possible. Oh, I, I, I said this on Tuesday night. When I'm fasting, I find services to go to. I go on Facebook to look who have a revival. I look for who have midday services, and I go because that's where I get sustenance. That's where I'm fed during my time of fasting, especially those of you, some people, there's about six, or six persons who have, who, have, who have called me and said to me, they are, they have joining me they're joining me in just um, tea and water. They're joining me with that element of the fast. And so I thank God for those six, especially those you six and all of you who are fasting at some level. You want to be in worship environments. You want to be in a place to ensure that you are not just dieting. All right? And being in corporate worship settings helps you for the, in that process. Uh, of course, you need your private personal time, but getting to different services. And so this is why we always include the Highway Church of God revival in our fast, because it helps us. 
it helps us as we are fasting, seeking the face of God. And so um, I don't want you to see those, especially those of you who are fasting, to see these four nights of services as, oh, Lord, I get church every night. You need to see it as, oh, thank you, God, that I have a place to go to to be refreshed. All right? That's what you want, that's what I want you to see it as. I'm, there's probably not going to be a night for the next 20, about 19 days where I'm not going to be in a church somewhere. I'm going to be, except the Lord calls me away from my own personal time. Other than that, I'm going to be somewhere in some church, in some service, in something, getting myself fed um, for what God is positioning us for in this 2019. And I'm excited about it. Clap for everyone that's fasting, and let's just thank God. <coughs> All right. Typically, what I try to do is when I'm fasting is not to exert plenty of energy and try to talk soft and not to use my outside voice. I didn't mess that up for the morning. Uh, so let's see if I can capture it back for the fleeting moments that we have left. Let's give you seven declarations on boundaries. We've been talking about boundaries now for the last uh, five or so weeks, the importance of establishing boundaries. And our seven declarations are based solely on that. All right, let's, let's go quickly through them. I'm not going to expand upon them. You are going to read them, and I'm going to say, um, who, who there? Or two of y'all there today? <laughs> y'all messed me up last week. I was calling you and it was up. So, the noses. Okay. So, uh, the first declaration, ready, go. Ready, read. If God ain't said, you ain't got to keep it. Your boundaries must be based on what God has said. When God gives you a vision, a destiny, a purpose for your life, then you establish boundaries based on what God has said. That is the only framework that you have to stay within the parameters of. Do you got that? All right. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all get that? Okay, next one. Ready? There? Ready? Read. Once they've been established, your grandma, your sister, your brother, your boyfriend, your cousin, your girlfriend, none of them have the authority to remove those boundaries that have been established. All right? They gotta be, once, once they're set based on God's plan for your life, how are you letting somebody else change them? That can't happen. Number three, ready? Read. It's very important to ensure that boundaries are not assumed. You don't need people them assuming your boundaries. You got to tell them straight up, no, no, I don't do that. I don't go there. You ain't going there. Preach, boy. That ain't going to happen. No, you ain't going to guess that. And you ain't, ain't going to have me home the next day depressed because I should have told you. Preach, Denzel. You all say amen, please? Amen. Thanks. All right? So you won't have to establish them from Jump Street. There are certain, no, I don't do club on Tuesday. Some of you are walking into that. You are walking into that. Oh, yeah, no, definitely not on Tuesday. <laughs> you got to draw certain lines. You got certain things, you know who you are based on what God has called you to be. And so you will not allow anyone to cause you to mess that up. All right. Uh, number four. Ready, read. If you cannot respect the lines that I have drawn by, don't call me. And I'm not going to call you. I don't care if there's fixed TV. I'll find somebody to fix my TV. Because some of y'all so, mm, mm, you know they don't respect your boundaries, but your fridge breaks down and they fix fridge good. They ain't the only person who's fixed fridge. Stop being silly. Stop it. That's dumbness. You know better than that. Yeah, my, my, my cell phone screen crack and there's fixed cell phone. Let me call them. You know what you're doing. Preach that, sir. No, you establish your boundaries, and once the boundaries have been drawn, there is another company, there's another person somewhere in the Bahamas that is do what they do. If not, send it away and let them bring it back. You do not have to. Some of y'all are making life hard for yourself when you know there are people that don't respect the boundaries that you have set, and you are finding ways to connect with them when you don't have to. And so stop raising your voice. <laughs> this is get me with you all, though. This is get me. You know, no, I ain't them no more. Only reason why I call them, because I, I, I had a flat tire. 
So only the M1 is plugged in. Nobody else. I mean, we got, we got Nigerians all over the country. They, they ready to fix your tire. I ain't selling them. They got a lot of tires up. They, they got some tires, buddy. They, and, they, and they getting better tires, too. I just buy from them. I ain't gonna say. They got good tires. You got all the places you could go, but you won't call that boy from right there behind Sugar Kid Bo. You won't go to him, and you know that's the boy. Preach the answer. Look at some of y'all. Sugar Kid Bo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so what did the thing say? Go back, I ain't finished yet. I will revoke access to anyone that doesn't. Revoke access means it's being revoked. You ain't gonna get access no more. No, I don't need you for nothing. I got Jesus on a cell phone with Wi Fi. I don't need you. I can find someone else. I feel like I need to stay for two more minutes, man. You saw y'all got it, Vera? Vera, y'all just calling people back. We just call them for all. <laughs> what do y'all call them back? You don't need them. I won't move, but what you call them for? <laughs> Go to the next one, man. Ready, read. That's it right there. That's you acting in contravention to the boundaries that you upset. You didn't say they crossed the line and then you calling them. I, it's a, it, it ain't nothing happened. All I want is someone to go to the movies with me. God, your people are so. Mm, mm, mm. Go to the next one, Shani. Ready, read. Huh? Wait, wait. What's it again? Some of y'all really petty now. Y'all trying to, y'all trying to just, y'all really petty. Yeah, that's not necessary. I defending y'all. Yeah, they, they, they had to do that. Whatever they do, they had to do it. I didn't see it, but whatever it was, it didn't have to. Y'all petty. That time was not necessary. Fix the thing here and put it back for them, yeah? But they petty self. Right now, that's Lura. And that's Lura. Petty, man. Oh, oh Will was twice it. Yeah, I give it to like that. That's a minus, too. Oh, that's my fault. Sorry. Just making Lura round yours. I will constantly revisit my boundaries to ensure that there are no encroachments. You got to constantly go back there. Y'all know what encroachment is, right? When somebody step across your boundary. You know, that's like when you, you got a fence, when a neighbor put a fence there, the two feet in your yard, yeah, they encroach it. Yeah. And so what you have to do is very regularly, you got to visit. Don't wait until the thing goes south to visit it. Check regularly. Every once in a while, check. Go find the stakes. When scripture says, go, go, go back to the old landmarks. You know? Check them every once in a while to make sure they're still in place. All right? Last one, number seven, and then I can get into this word. Number seven, go. Ready, read. That's the only way, beloved, that you are going to be able to do the other six. You're not living a life of prayer. You're not constantly, I told you that prayer is not just you talking to God, but it's God communicating to you. If you are not constantly in that place, boundaries ain't going to mean nothing. You can always catch your boundaries after they didn't cross if you are not praying. Praying heightens your sensitivity. Your alarms work better when you're praying. When you're in praying, you're so far gone before the alarms make a slight beep. But when you're praying plenty, as soon as someone comes close, there's an alarm going off. Are you getting this? All right. Now let's go into this. Now I began this, um, this morning by telling you what the Lord said to me. He says, um, the same way Supernatural is a compound word. It's the same way the supernatural requires a compounded effort. Right? So, supernatural is no, that when you have compound words, they are no more one than the other. Correct? The word overlooked is no more over than it is looked. Uh, we, we, how are we doing? 
it, it is a balance between the two words that make it a compound word. How am I doing, um, Sister English? Thank you so much. So both must exist in equilibrium in order to establish the compounded effect. Am I still doing good? I, it feels that way. So this is the same way it actually materializes. If we want to see supernatural, there must be an equilibrium between the super and the natural in operation. Now, personally, um, for me, um, Lexus, I was going to leave this teaching on boundaries to go to something a little more tongsy. Some little more whoosh kaka. Some that had a little more fire because we fasting, and when you're fasting, you want fire. And that's why this intro meant so much to me because God says, You ain't going to get the sparks and the fire if the natural ain't in place. So if you really want fire, stay the course. Let's ensure that the house has their boundaries in place so that we can see the fullness of my power revealed. We told you the text of Proverbs says that a person that has no control is like a city with broken down walls. We've read that for the last five weeks. And so we need to ensure that our boundaries are in place so that our walls can be erected so that we can handle the weight of the blessing that God has for us. Understand this, that <laughs> Peter would have not caught those fish if he didn't draw out into the deep. That was the natural. Uh, the withered man's hand would have not been healed if he didn't stretch it forth, like Jesus said. Um, all of the miracles that we see, just about all of them that we see, there is a combination of natural and super. Cornelius' house would have not been saved if he didn't cry out to God such that Peter heard the cry that came from the next side of the earth. Let me just put this right here. The Lord said to me in prayer last night, he says, when you pray against the barrier of containment, I do a lot of things. You've got to stay with me today, all right? Because it just coming heavy, and as it comes, I can release it. Um, as you pray against that second heaven, that dimension where demons and principalities function, and you pray against their strongholds and their powers, God said to me last night, he says, your prayer is not only to ensure that your prayer, that your prayer and your request cut through that dimension, but he says, your prayer also allows the prayers of others to cut through into this dimension. Did you get that? So we pray, and, and Daniel, here we go, here's Daniel. Daniel prays, and in that second dimension, there's a prince of Persia, there's a principality that is blocking the answer, as opposed to when Jacob was in Bethel. When Jacob was in Bethel, he was under a what? Open heaven. And how do we know it's an open heaven? The Bible gives us a picture of what an open heaven looks like. The picture was angels ascending and descending. There was no principality that was blocking the ascension and descent of angels. Whenever there is that blockage, that means that we need now to intervene through prayer. We need to call for help so that that layer that is blocking be removed. Now, God said we have been focusing on the sound leaving this room, leaving Glory 93.9, leaving Cable 12, and hitting the right homes. But God says there are some Corneliuses that are not in this house that are praying. There are some persons saying, Paul, come down here to Macedonia. Yeah, they are praying, but there are principalities that are blocking our ears from hearing. And so we, when we pray for this veil to be removed and for God to render the heavens, it's not only getting our sound out, but it's getting the sound of those that need us in. Can you receive that? If you do, clap your hands if you get, if you get that. Let me give you a case in point, Chester. Case in point was when the call came from Fox Hill. A call came from Fox Hill. Not a phone call, but there was a call in the heavenlies that went, that passed hundreds of churches between Fox Hill Step Street and this church here. But God turned and tuned our ear to hear the cry from Step Street such that this church was able to mobilize and create transformation such that the culprits were caught in 24 hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
So there are, the, while, we, while we are now targeting Mountain Heights and we're doing work in them now and ASAP is going consistently, there are going to be some other communities that God calls us that even in nowhere near this church. But when Cornelius or his like makes the call, our ears must be open to hear it. That's why we need to pray for an open heaven. How did I get there? What I was talking about before I got there? I don't even remember. Supernatural, eh? Supernatural. Okay, good. Right. So then this, oh, I, I saw about how there was, the nat there was a prayer of Cornelius that taught Peter. Got it. Okay, good. So there must be the combination of the super and the natural in order for us to see the full abundance of what God has promised. Um, are y'all staying up with me? I try my best to not overload you, but it ain't waking. So try your best to keep up, please. I, and I'm, I'm going to try my best to stay as structured as possible. All right, so let's, let's move then. Um, the Lord said to us then from this point of balancing the super and the natural, he says that we need to put certain boundaries in place. And for 2019, he gave us six boundaries, six areas of our life that we need to ensure that our boundaries are properly installed and our walls are erected. Six areas. Um, um, Cassie, you got those six areas for me? Let's go with them. Number one is what? Our mouth. You got to set boundaries around our mouth. Number two is what? Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Those are the six areas that we must have boundaries in place. Our mouth, our money, our manners, our motives, our mission, and our ministry. We got to have those boundaries in place. Now, the Lord spoke to me this week when I was going somewhere else with the teaching. He says, Denzel, I want you to take each of these six areas one by one because they are that important to me, and I want to see my people prosper this year. I want to see my people advance this year. Now, those of us, I, let me do this once, once, once here and just kill this, that there are many of us that experience advancement both spiritually and naturally in 2018. I want those people to really give God a good praise right here. Just like, thank him. You experience advancement, <laughs> progress, progression. <laughs> Hallelujah. I needed to do that because I need those of you that are sitting in the periphery to understand we don't just talk this. I need those people, when we talked about supernatural abundance, uh, I, I mean, testimonies have already come. I think, Shakara, what the bill was that was canceled for you and Lionel? The medical bill, what's the number? $96,000 was canceled last year. You're a clap better than that, man. $96,000. We told you all this, this, that God has opened that portal of abundance upon us. That ain't abundance? I mean, and, and, and some of y'all, y'all play crazy, right? But Marisha, what was yours? Yours was 10000 Now, Now, some of y'all, y'all don't, like, no, no, you got $10,000. The rest of us, that that's a bill just like the 90, some of us, that 10, just as big as the 96. Can we just give God praise for even that 10000 that was canceled on last year? It is important that I highlight persons like that and other testimonies that exist around this house because you need to understand when we speak concerning positioning for the abundance, it does happen. The overflow does happen. The increase does happen and it is happening all over this house. Glory to God. Healings and miracles are happening straight through and we don't want you to miss. And so what we are giving you are the instructions needed for the alignment that God has for your life. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready for it. All right. So the first thing is, he says, we have to put boundaries around our mouth. Now, when I got this word, I was about to go to declarations and meditating on the word and this and that. God says, that's not where I want you to go. I need you to show my people how dangerous it is, dangerous it is for them to not have boundaries with regard to their mouth. Show them through the word of God the danger that they are putting themselves and others in because they are reckless with their words. Now, uh, before I even go there, I want you to take note of every scripture. I'm going to give you but five or so scriptures that I'm going to give slight exegesis to, not that much, but just a little bit to, so that you can get the understanding of the word. But I want you to understand with every scripture, that I'm about to read, JJ, everyone, none says that the Lord will hold your tongue. 
Not one scripture to me will say that if you speak in tongues enough, the Holy Ghost will step in and shut your mouth up. The idea of controlling what comes out of your mouth is not the work of the Holy Ghost, Devad. God don't do that. You got to know when to shut up. Now, I didn't say shut up. I said you got to know when to shut up. I tell people shut up is rude. But I didn't, I didn't say shut up. I said you got to know when. You got to have to know when to say, what to say, why to say. And most, impor most importantly, how to say. Because you can say the wrong thing in the right way and it feels okay. <laughs> I can show you how to. But let's keep on. Let's, let's go now. Let's, let me give you the first scripture. So I want you to get these and take these so you can go over them in your personal prayer time. That you can understand what the Spirit of God is saying. Be like the Berean saints. Just go ahead and check it. Try it. To make sure that I didn't give you um, the word of Denzel but the word of, of God. Matthew chapter 15. Go there. The first point concerning your words, when you don't have boundaries over your mouth, the first thing is, um, my words can make my life unclean. My words can make my life. I won't say your words, but let's say my words, so it can make all of us inclusive. My words can make my entire life unclean. Matthew 15, watch this. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which comes out of the mouth defileth the man. It defiles the whole man. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Make us, make us smart. Jesus said, Are ye also without understanding? That's verse 15, sorry. Um, not verse 17. Do not, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drawer. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. He says this. We, 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 this is, he said to me like this, I'm very, he says many of us, when we see people living unclean, we assume that demons got into their life. That they've been taken over by demons and they're doing these actions because the devil got in and all this kind of stuff. God says, no. When you see persons living unclean lifestyles, check their conversation. Your mouth is making you unclean. And the demonic <laughs> infestation that you are seeing and the demonic oppression is as a result of them being summoned by your mouth. Many of us with our mouth have called the demons and say, come over here. Because our mouths were out of control. If you got it, say, I got it. All right, let's, let's, um, let's go to number two. Ephesians, 20, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. 29, 30. This is, number one was that my mouth my words can make my life unclean. Number two is my words can tear down those around me. Ephesians 4, 29 and 30. Is it up on the screen? It's 29, actually. Let's just do 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. If it's on the screen, let's read it. Ready, read. Hmm. Now, this is the way he said this one to me, Sister Valerian, and this one, this one got me. He says, how many people in your immediate circle are always broken down and depressed? And I was like, God, where are you going with this? He says, son, how many people in your immediate circle are always broken down and depressed? And I started to think, I said, there's a couple. Could it be that your words are not edifying them? Because if they're constantly around you, why are they broken? Are you getting this? If they are constantly in your presence, why are they not built up? Because he says that 
you should speak those things that are good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. If everybody around you is broken, depressed, and miserable, and they always around you, you are failing. Because your words have the power to change their reality. I said, God, there's too much responsibility on me. He said, is it? To whom much is given? Much is required. Then he says, why do you think I place them in your circle? You trying to run from them, not realizing that God has sent them to you to minister grace to them by the words that come out of your mouth. Now, some of you trying to rationalize this in your head and saying, but no, it ain't, but I'm, I'm, no, you can do it. You just don't think before you talk. He says, you have the power and you have the obligation and the responsibility to minister grace to them by the words that come out of your mouth. Why are they not being edified? Edified means built up. Why are they always torn down? And this is the point. They are always around you. The answer to this riddle is not you leave them. That's not the answer. Exit stage left. That's not the answer. The answer is begin ministering to them. And watch what it says. He says, he says that communication is proceeding. In other words, this isn't just one word or two words. Your, your mouth is issuing corrupt stuff. It's flowing out of you. One time I'm, <laughs> I, I, just, I was with someone and it was moving me, moving me this day. And they said to me, at, at the end of the day, they said, do you believe your job is to make everybody happy? I said, yeah. It's like you was like trying to talk to everybody and be nice to them. Sometimes I just don't be into that. I say, I guess you don't have the mandate that I have. And that's before I do the scripture. That's what we're supposed to do. When I walk away, I want you watching me walk away. You never know, like, like some of you, you walk away, they watch you because they want to throw something at you. But, <laughs> but I, I want when, when I leave people's presence, they talk about me when I go on. Like, That should be the effect of the believer. See, y'all want spiritual talk. This spiritual. This is spiritual talk. Some of you, the only good you are to the kingdom is when you are in an unknown language. We need you of some earthly good. We need your English to make sense. But I know your tongue speak like, but it can't do it. I know things happening in the heavenlies when you do that. But I need your English. Can I get your English to minister healing? Can I get your English to make someone smile? Please. Some of y'all, I love to be next to y'all in tongues. Oh, my ticket. Sound like aliens, man. I love it. You think you're watching Lost in Space, boy? Are you going to get it? You remember, you remember Lost in Space? Yeah, y'all, they're young. They didn't know Lost in Space. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, lost in Space, boy. But <laughs> I need your English to build up people. Are you getting this? Let's move. Let's move. Watch this. He, Colossians 4, 5 and 6. I almost finished, believe it or not. Uh, no, I can stop. I finish. Colossians 4, 5 and 6. Colossians 4, 5 and 6. All right. Uh, ready? Read. Verse 6. Uh, 
All right, watch this. <coughs> God said to me, in this season where we are, we're still under the theme from 2018, because you know our year changes um, February 1. So we're still under the theme of aggressively advancing the kingdom agenda. We're about being salt and light. That's what we've been doing, and we thank God. We look around this room, and we're seeing that we are being, we're doing a good job of being salt and light. That's amazing. But God says with this kind of theme, we have to be more discriminate, more conscious of our obligation to reach the lost. So number three, the third one is, my words can hinder the salvation of the unbeliever. Let me go over number one again. Number one is, my words can make my life unclean. Number two, my words can tear down those around me. Number three, my words can hinder the salvation of the unbeliever. You know, there are people that are not safe because they met you. Not you, the person next to you. I mean that. Th there are people that are not safe because they had the wrong encounter with you. Because they caught you in a moment where someone ran you hot. And you believe because the person ran you hot that gave you justification to release yourself. And relieve yourself. There are persons that have said to me, um, boy, I saw so and so. I mean, that's the particular person who was there to me, a um, friend of mine. But I, I know how they go. So I couldn't even defend it. Because, um, you know, you've got friends who say it, but you know how they go. <laughs> Come on, man. You know, we got saved friends, but you know how they go. And this person said to me, say, boy, 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 Rev. I was a bishop. I said, Rev, I met one of your girls in Solomon's. And they was returning something, and the people didn't let them return it. Whoosh <laughs> kata. They say, Rev, I know that's your friend. And Romeo, I need the summons while you leave it. You know the person. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, they say, Rev, I didn't know they was like that. Now, I'm struggling. Why I'm struggling? Because I know. I know how they go. <laughs> now, I would never tell nobody how they go, but I know how they go. And, they, and I say to myself, Lord, what didn't they do? I had another friend of mine that went, woman of God, that was woman of God in a, in a pharmacy that, that um, uh, now, the, the, the pharmacy made a bad, they made a major mistake. They should have been making a, a compound for their child, their baby child. Child was about 10, 11 months, and they didn't crush the pills properly. So when they poured it to give the child, they saw chunks of pills inside of it to this young child. So that's enough to make anybody go live it. <laughs> and and I, what, what's, what, what I struggle with is that when I found out that my sanctified friend was standing on the counter. <laughs> standing on the counter. Save, sanctify. Filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. But on the people, I say, I say, on the counter? They say, you want to see the picture? I say, no, I don't want to see it. They shot a video. Now, I won't say whether this person goes to this church or not. I wouldn't do that. Look at y'all looking around. Look at y'all looking around. Look at y'all looking around. Is. They say, Peggy, they say, no. they, 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 they say it's you. <laughs> and I... <laughs> and listen... Man, see, <laughs> beloved, my brethren and sisters, listen to your boy. We are something like, something like a politician, police, a doctor, 
a soldier. We are something like them because they are never off duty. That was the problem with that little strike that gone down. That goes against the whole notion of being a physician. I ain't care what nobody say. That goes against what they have pledged to do. They, they pledge not to refuse anybody's service. That's part of their little wow. Bow to you. But guess what? Say what? We wasting them because they have to respond when they are called. We are always called. So, only if a call is made, they have to respond, but a believer always on call. We are always on the job, so there is a time when Menes and, and, and Diaglodem could go to one island somewhere and love themselves. Time when Barack was president, he went somewhere, close, turned off the cameras and love yourself, and somebody got a camera in. But, you, you know, they, they have those moments. The believer don't have them. We always on duty. And the risk we run is that there may be an unbeliever somewhere. Can, can, I, can I say this to... To, to those of us that have family, the couple of y'all that have family, some of y'all don't have no family, but those of you that have family, do you, do you, that your unsafe family members, they count as well, you know. And some of you are the reason why your unsafe family members ain't safe. Because how you carry on a family guardians, gatherings, how you have no standard, how you yuck up and whine and shake and whine and do up your, and you do everything that they do, you you drink as they drink, you party as they party, you cuss as they cuss, and you wonder why they don't follow you to church. They don't, have, they don't respect you. You have no standard. You sing well, but you don't live right. So your, your, you know, your family counts as those you should witness, witness to as well, you know. Your family members ain't saying because of your mouth. It's vile. Pastor, I don't think you should put a responsibility on me. I think you should live better. James, this James, right? What is this? James or is Colossians? What, what is this? Colossians, all right. This, this Paul. Paul says, listen, man. You don't know when unbelievers can be lurking. Oh, Lord, I say that word. Now my mind gone somewhere else. The foolishness that believers post on Facebook the silliness, the dumb things. Some of y'all even in this church, and y'all don't, don't, don't look at me for no half face. I'll call your name. Don't play with me. The foolishness some of y'all post on Facebook as believers, but you got a vent. Are you a child? You sit on your computer and post stupid things on your, but you mad at somebody and this and that, and I go this and that and bite this and that. Who, what are you? Some of you, I don't look at your page on Facebook because it's sickening. You are a child of God and got so much tongues and you got to type that phone because somebody cross you. Somebody made you mad and so you changed your WhatsApp status to bonfire on y'all. <laughs> Whoever started bonfire that I talking to you. I mean, it is, it is insane to see that you have so much Jesus in here, but are so much of a spiritual midget out of here. Just a midget spiritually that you can't control your emotions. You got to type it on Facebook? Really? What happened to going for a drive? Ross, I even again are deep praying is hard. I ain't going to say praying. Let's go. Go eat something. Don't. You got to go type it and let the world know how you feel with your saved silly self. Come on, man. You got to be more mature than that. You got to be more grown, more responsible. You got the Holy Ghost, man. So you say.
Come on. Why is that it? Man, listen. This, this year, and I'm not looking at those who are here this year. If I see you all do this, I can call you out publicly. If you act out openly, I have, re I have permission to rebuke you openly. If I see that from those of y'all who here in this house who I know heard this word and I see silliness posted on Facebook, I'm going to call you out. Stop this, man. Come on. You got all these unsafe folk around you and that's the st And then you talking about join me at Life Worship Center. <laughs> Putting my name in that foolishness. <laughs> Put in quotes from I'm Bishop Denzel Rose. Don't put my name on your post. Now, with that double standard you live in, live right before you quote me. My words can hinder the salvation of the unbeliever. No, but let's be, let's, let's be saved, man. Let's stop being so emotive, so impulsive, so childish. I mean, I'm, I'm watching, you know, some believers, like the gospel music artists who are having fights on Facebook, going at one another. Don't do that. Don't do that. I almost said something else. Let me just let me say that before I let me stop that. Let me go this go on. Believers don't vent on Facebook. We don't vent on social media. Believers don't do that. We don't do that. We pray. We process. Because we realize we are always on call. We are never off. And that moment can be the moment. There are persons that don't listen to preachers for mistakes that they made at a food store. I heard, listen, listen none of us have anything bad to say about um, Dr. Miles. We know how amazing he was as a man of God. And I heard this person saying that they was in this food store one time and they asked him for some money. He didn't give it to them. And they said they'll never go to BFM. Now, you can't avoid, there are some people who will do silliness like that, but I said it to give you an example of how people are so fickle. They, 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 they'll grab anything to be silly with. So why are you giving them material? That's the point I'm making. Why are you giving them material? They're ready looking for things. They are assessing and they are critiquing your every move, your every word. Why are you being careless, man? Let it be like how I had to defend Dr. Miles in that store. I said, have you ever been in a food store without money? No, but I know you got money. I got money too, but I got none now. So I defended him. But the point of the matter is, some of us are doing some things that, are, that you cannot defend. How are you going to defend the video with the person on the counter? I, how do you defend that? They didn't take the medication? They probably did and take the crazy pill that morning. Church tonight, let me hurry up. What number is this? Four. Matthew 12, 36, 37. Oh, boy. Are we helping anybody? Matthew 12, 36, 37. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Number four is that my words can give way to guilt. Many of us are living under a cloud of guilt and condemnation as a result of the words that have come out of our mouth. We know that we, we blame the devil because he is the accuser of the brethren. But some of the guilt, some of the condemnation that we are living under is not the work of the devil. 
it's the work of our own words. Now watch this. Look at what Jesus says. It's in red in your Bible. He says, for every idle communication. I have found this to be true, and I'm trying my best to put this into practice. I fail sometimes, but I'm trying my best to do this. If you're writing, write this down. When you don't have nothing to say, say nothing. We do the most damage when we are idle. When we, func when we function without intent. When we are just randomly just letting things just come out of our mouth. Just, 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 I ain't really checking like that. I just chilling and just, you, some of you, you ain't fit to just chill. You need to be, always be doing something. And when you ain't got nothing to do, go home, close the door. Don't let nobody in because you can't handle idle. What do what folks say about idle, idle hands? Yeah, yeah. He like idle, I wouldn't talk about idle mouths. When your mouth is idle, the devil get all up in that. Personally for me, I, I like to stay busy. When I am busy, I go sleep. So Y'all you, know I talk crazy. You can imagine me idle. You, you, you wouldn't want to be around me idle. So when I, when I ain't doing nothing, just go sleep. Because idle and me don't go well together. And y'all wasting me. Because my past ain't as colorful as y'all own. Because y'all got reference points. Y'all got things to pull out from. And so he says, be careful with idle conversation. And so in other words, he's saying, be intentional. And when you don't have nothing to say with intent, don't say anything at all. Your Bible says it's better to make a, not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. And a lot of times we make vows and covenants with our mouth that we really don't intend to make, and we put ourselves under condemnation and under damnation because we made vows that we had no intentions to keep. But we were just being idle. Are you getting this? I really want to go through all of these. I may have time. I want to end now. Marsha, get ready. Lord God, I got to release Marsha soon directly. I need today. We release another day. After this, that's it? All right. When, when Marsha do next month? Why are we talking to Marsha in here? <laughs> Y'all do realize he should be right over there, right? <laughs> I mean, they, they right here talking like she's in here. No, you, you got to do it today. So when the surprise shower? <laughs> I mean, since we talking like shit here, I mean, we got we got a date yet, or we? we in, okay, all right, and no, no date yet. I was telling you that she was here. Like you didn't know she was here. Yeah, okay, all right. Marshall surprise shower's coming up, but we ain't gonna surprise you too much now. We ain't, we ain't want no <laughs> tender surprise. Oh, this is a good one. Let me, if I don't go do anyone else, let me give you this last one. This is going to bless you. There are, how many more there are? There's one more after this one. But let me give you this one. Even if I don't make it to the last one, then we'll end. And I'll finish this next week. I'm supposed to finish this today. Man. Was it good, though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's cool if I carry on next week. What number are we on? Five. Okay. Um, First Peter 3. Did I stop at the truth? I stop on this. First Peter 3 and 10. Man, it's so good to see the Hamiltons this morning. They gave me life this morning. Oh, man. I almost ran off the road last week. Before last, I almost ran off the road. I got a WhatsApp from Anthony Hamilton. I said, good God, I'm like, what's that? <laughs> I almost, I almost run off the road. I almost run off the road. I said, welcome. <laughs> welcome. To, why are you dog getting fancy? All right. First Peter 3 and 10. When you're ready. That's 3 and 10. First Peter 3 and 10. 
One verse. <coughs> if you have it, let's read it together. If you have it in your Bibles, while they get up on the screen. Ready? Read. This is so big. Now, I want you to see something. Because I said it in, in the intro. I want, to, I want to make sure you caught it. In Matthew, he, he says um, that those things that proceed out of your mouth. In Ephesians, Paul says, let no corrupt. And Colossians, Paul again says, let your speech. Matthew, um, he says, for by thy words. Now we hear in 1 Peter, and he says, um, refrain his tongue. Um, that his lips, that they speak no guile. Every one of these scriptures put the responsibility on us. It is our responsibility. Everyone in this room that believe you didn't need this word this morning, this is for you. Because your first issue is your pride. And you are so full of pride that you are delusional. Because you really believe that your language is seasoned with grace. You really think you got it together. And you don't realize how many people with your prideful self that you have turned off. <sighs> Watch what he says here. He says, many of us, God says to me, he says, many of us blame the quality of our lives on the lack of money or on the poor life church choices that we've made or the persons that we've connected with. But this text says, the quality of your life is directly proportional to the words that come out of your mouth. Wow. He says the quality of your, let me hear what it is. He says the quality of your life is directly proportional to the, how does it do it in the other churches? They clap it. Like, clap your hands. Clap. Yeah. Uh, No, when you clap, you don't see me drinking. Uh, the, <laughs> the quality of our lives is directly proportional to the words that have come out of our mouth. Now, are you pleased with the quality of your life? Let me ask you again. Are you pleased with your standard of living? And God says, if you are not, check what you have said. Now, I know if you're not like me, I believe my account should look a whole lot better than it looks right now. Watch this. I have given enough, sold enough, tithed enough, blessed enough, first fruit enough, all them things enough to have more in my account. And I have been assessing all of them trying to figure out why my account looks the way it looks. He says, no, stop looking at them and think about what you have said. Moby, that jacked me up, because I, as you know, as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, oh, yes. And the sower soweth. And where the word come from? Your mouth. So with your wallet, you're giving good, but with your mouth, you're sowing corruption. And your mouth is supposed to water what your pocket puts in the ground. So with your pocket, with your bank account, you're putting seed in the ground, and with your mouth, you're digging it up. Hence, we're not seeing the harvest that we should have been seeing because your mouth is killing your harvest. Are we teaching good, man? Y'all getting what I'm saying? So he says it is counterproductive to give plenty and to speak unwisely. It, you're working against yourself. You might as well don't give. <sighs> That's it. How are you? Are you right? You right? Yeah? Okay. 
just it's only up to you really. there's one more I can just throw it out there just for completion and then um, next week I'm going to give you four things you can do to help rattle your tongue four things I'm going to give you one of the four right now but I can open it up next week and give you scripture for this one think before you talk <laughs> that's so big think before you talk but I can, talk, I can, use, I can give you Bible for that Bible so we're, we're winning that's Bible I can give you Bible because the Bible even say think before you talk my words what, oh God James 126 Marshall and playing we finished get ready to, we can give in a second we're done and I want to greet all of our business here today please visit don't leave I want to celebrate all of you so many visits that I can see here I want to celebrate you give me give me five minutes so we can do all this right now so don't leave me please don't leave me we can leave together James 126 number five was what now that was five or four I didn't say what five was oh sorry my words can decrease my quality of life my words can decrease my quality of life number six please someone give these give five and six to Marsha please like like what's up with her she's getting mad but she missed her number six is this my words can cancel out my church work Number 126, James 126. If any man among you seem to be religious <laughs> and bridle not his tongue, but deceive it his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Watch this. I said church work because I, I was going to say ministry, but I had to say church work because I don't care how much you sing on the praise team. I don't care how much you use the church administrator or use the sound tech or use the usher or you as the director of ladies ministry or you director of hospitality. I don't care what your function is in church. If you don't control your tongue, everything you do in church is worth nothing. Who cares what kind of post you hold? Who cares your title? He says, that's, that's, that's the Bible. In the Bible, right? He says, your religion is vain. Those, a religion in this context means those things done as unto the Lord. That's what it means. Things done as unto the Lord. All those wonderful things that you do unto the Lord, he says, if your mouth ain't right, they ain't worth nothing. Do you know good, hard-working church people have emptied out church? You know, there's a whole hymn of the church, Sister Val. I know you know it. Um, I want to be a, wo a, a, a worker for the Lord. I will work. I will pray. I will labor at it every day in the vineyard of the Lord. Some of them laborers empty in church. Because they waken, but they mouth poison. And we have celebrated good wakers. Watch it, Denzel. Somebody about to get a fan. Marsha, just hold that cord right there. I want them to hear you see your cord making it sound soft. We got some good wakers who are spreading poison like cancer in the church. And working very good. Getting the job done, but emptying out. The, work, the people in the house because of what comes out of their mouth. Your good works doesn't make up for your poisoned mouth. Doesn't matter how, no matter how good you are on the get out, Jeff. And God knows I miss you when you go on vacation. Do you ever do that again? <laughs> ever. You travel Monday, come back Tuesday, and go back Wednesday. <laughs> come back Saturday. No more of that. Or you travel when I travel. So I ain't gonna miss y'all. I can be gone. Let them suffer without us. But Jeff, I don't care how good you are, not get out. Your mouth will cancel every chord that you play. Don't care how much you think it's in the worship. If your mouth ain't right, it cancels all of that gift you got. Man, who leads worship like your husband, man? Girl singing like, I'm on the ocean. But if she don't know how to talk to people, she'll be up there singing all the right notes, and somebody be looking up there like, look, look at this one. 
And that is happening in this house because some of us don't know how to talk. We know how to work our ministry, but don't know how to talk to people. Preach Denzel. And your post is covered because you're working. But the text says, Brent, that ain't good enough. It's coming out of your mouth. How are you bridling? Look what James says. James says, bridle it. Like you, like you do a horse. Control that thing, man. Control it, Trey. You got to watch what you say, bro. I says, you you got to... God, what did you all say? Everybody can't handle the hard joke, Stafford. Some of us can handle when Stafford hit us hard, but others can't handle it. So Stafford got to be careful to know who to hit and who not to hit. Because someone would not come back to church because you joke on them too hard, and you didn't mean anything by it, and you were a good usher, but they don't come because of you, because you made that one move. Y'all be careful. You look at me, I'll call your name. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be careful how you look at me. I don't think you should call his name. I'll call your name next. We got to get the house in alignment this year. Abundance is here. Increase is here. Expansion is here. We can't be the ones, daddy, while we're catching fish on this side and someone poking hole in the boat on that side. So the fish getting, the fish catching, the boat catching all kind of fish, but boy, the boat's sinking. And it ain't singing because of fish, it's singing because someone put a hole in the boat. So we gotta make sure all the holes plugged. Come on here, man. One person catching the fish, they're throwing the fish outside back in the water. He says, I don't care how religious you are. You get master. I don't care how religious you are. Your mouth can cancel out. All that good church and you do it. Your mouth, put this on the TV just the way I say this. Don't edit this one. At all. Just need to get out. Because this isn't a word just for life. We got to be careful, man. We got to control our mouths. I, when, I, when the Lord said talk about the mouth, I was so ready to talk about declarations. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you got to be careful what comes out of your mouth. You got to speak the word, speak life. God said, no, don't fool that now. Don't fool that. I can give you a chance to do that. Right now, too many people talking poison. And are hurting, are dampening the effect of the ministry because our mouths have not been tamed. <sighs> Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray, see if there be, see if there be, come singers, some wicked way. Cleanse me from every sin. Cleanse me from every sin. Every sin and sin. Love this verse. Hands outstretched. Oh, Holy Ghost. Extend your hands toward heaven. Oh, Holy Ghost. Revival comes from thee. Revival from thee. From thee. Send a revival. Say that. Send a revival. Revival. Start the work in me.
declares to that thou wilt supply supply our need for blessings now for for blessings now oh Lord to you. We will minister grace that our conversation be seasoned with salt. That our communication will not be corrupt. That we will have control over our tongues. That we will not allow our emotions to come out of our mouth. We will govern our lives, Father. That we will draw to the kingdom and not repel. So wash us, purge us, purify us, cleanse us. For the work that you've called us to do. There's a mighty anointing here. I just felt the fire of God released. I just felt a refreshing. Glory to God. Thank you for that unbeliever that's coming to you right now. That's submitting their life to you. Thank you God for that one that's looking for a church home that is being convicted now. The one that's rededicating their life. Thank you Father. That one that's being filled with the Holy Ghost in this moment. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you for healing God that eye. I saw an eye just now that's being healed in the name of Jesus. A twitching in the left eye. Some nerve condition, something is going wrong. I command healing over it in the name of Jesus. A thyroid issue is being healed now by the power of God. Glory to God. A, a growth in the breast being healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's somebody else with a boil. Glory to God. Some skin issue. I command healing now. Some discoloration, some rashes. We declare that when you go home and check, you will see that your skin is clear in the name of Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Headaches, back aches and knees healed now. Not by might, not by power, but God, by your spirit. And we give your name praise for it. It is so in Jesus' name. Thy word declares. by the word of God ministered to encouraged, corrected by the word today and you are grateful. Come on, let's respond to God now and thank him for what he spoke to us.